So I get asked about mastering fairly often, and it's kind of like this black box, right? It's like this dark art of the audio world. Um, so I thought that in this video, I would just show you the comparison of some of my mixes for actual records and show you what they sound like compared to the actual final master of those records. So let's just start. So I got three tracks up here, both the mix before, which is on the top track here, and then the final master down here. So we've got a mix by the band Emery. This is on their upcoming record uh, coming out on Tooth & Nail Records soon. This is a mix I did for the band Auras. And then this is for Intervals. So let's just start with the newest one. Um, this is for Emery. I'm going to play this first without matching the, the volume. So you see I've got the fader at the same level here. Um, and I'm going to A-B it just so you can hear the actual volume difference first between the two mixes. So here's mine. And then just pay attention here. And we'll see when you'll see when I switch to uh, the master. So obviously, big difference volume-wise. That one is the loudest master. Um, I'll come back to that and kind of compare all these masters in the end, but. Um, let's kind of dive further into this one. So if I actually try and bring down the master here, just with the gain, I'll try and just by ear, just try to get the volume pretty close um, to what we're hearing so that we can more just focus on the actual tone uh, changes of the mix. Okay, well, that's pretty much it. So this one is actually a pretty drastic change from the mix to the master, more than most records, which you'll see on the other songs. Um, so again, let's just A, B through my mix and the master. I'll just kind of play it for a bit and switch back and forth. So obviously he has added a lot more of like low mids. He's made the mix a lot warmer. Um, and the funny thing is, is like when I get masters back and I'm checking them, like I never do this. So this is like the first time I've ever done this with any of these songs. What I do when I get the master back is I just listen like on my phone, like on my AirPods and like in my car, because that's how I'm mostly listening to other records that I love, right? I don't, I don't buy like a record from a band I like and then just sit here and listen, you know, to the whole record in like Pro Tools. Um, so I'll just check it in the car and stuff. And like, just by doing that, I could, it's the same thing as like a mix car test. Like just by listening there, I know whether the master is right or not. I can tell if it's got enough energy and loudness, especially flipping back comparing with other records. I can tell if the overall tonal balance is right, but I'm not ever like really a being my mix to it side by side, unless I hear something weird in the master, then I might just like bring it into, into iTunes and like just a B my mix versus their master and just try to be like, okay, here's, here's what I'm not liking. But yeah, I'm kind of surprised by this because I didn't realize actually how much warmer and uh, kind of darker he, he made uh, the master compared to the mix on this record. especially the guitars. So I don't know exactly what he did. It sounds like the drums stayed pretty much the same, which I like. That's a huge thing with, with a good master is like, you know, bad mastering engineer will get this loudness and this is a loud master, but they'll like, they'll totally crush your, your drums, right? They'll use a limiter and the, the snare and the kick will just get pushed back and it will really suck. Whereas if you listen to the AB on this, the guitars get kind of thicker and darker on the master, but the drums and the impact kind of stays the same, even though he's obviously smashed it quite a bit here.
So impact of the drums kind of stayed the same. Overall brightness of like the drums kind of stayed the same. I don't know what he did, but he's just like made the guitars thicker and the overall mix just a little thicker, filled in some of the lower mids, which is awesome and made it really loud, uh, which is great. Um, so I was really happy with this master. Um, and like I said, this is the most drastic change. Now that I'm A-B-ing it, um, it was more drastic than, than I thought, but I'm happy with it. Um, now, when it comes to like the difference between mixing and mastering, like personally, I don't master my own stuff. And part of the reason is because number one, I just, I don't know, I've never really tried to learn mastering and, and how to think through all that. And um, I like to mix fast. I like to mix aggressively. And I like to get my mix basically exactly how I want it. Like I want my mix to be as good as it can possibly be when I'm done mixing. So in my mind, I don't know how to separate where, you know, I, I'm mixing and I get to like, I don't know, 90, 95%. And then what I just stop myself and then to like, okay, I'm going to stop mixing now. I know it needs to be better. I'm going to stop mixing and I'm going to start mastering. Like that doesn't make sense to me. I'm just going to keep going and keep mixing until it's like a hundred percent of, of what I want it to be, or at least what I think I can do with it. And then obviously another pair of ears, if it's a well-chosen mastering engineer, um, then he's going to get it even better. Now let's check out uh, the second track here. This is for the band Auras off of their album Binary Garden. So I'll do the same thing and AB uh, the original with the master. <laughs> Now that is not really um, volume match, so let me pull this down. So it's kind of interesting, because right? it's like literally the opposite of what we just heard on the Emery mix. Like this one, the master is like brighter. It's it's a little like more focused in the upper mids instead of the the thicker frequencies. Um, so it's it's kind of like the exact opposite right And this one's maybe a little more classic of what you would expect from a master compared to a good mix, right? It's like, he's obviously brightened it up a bit. He's given it a little more presence in the top end, obviously made it louder in the dynamics too, but otherwise the mix is like pretty much the same, right? So kind of a, a classic uh, example there. Now let's head over here to the intervals one. And this one's a little interesting. So let's pull this down. <laughs> This one's more similar to the Emery one in that it gets a bit a bit fuller. It's not so much about the brightness. It just kind of fills out um, the mid-range, um, which is great. Now, something interesting to note here, I mean, you can kind of look here. They're all like fairly loud mixes already. But even there's even a difference between this Intervals one, which was about eight years before this one, which is, you know, this record's just coming out this year. Um, so I mixed this like eight years earlier. Now... You can hear a difference in my mixes and this important point I want to make. So listen to the drums specifically and like the snare. it's cool but the snare is like kind of poking out above the mix more than you know the, the other mixes which i'll show you it's kind of like even maybe a bit loud it's kind of just like jumping out it doesn't have that like kind of crunchy squash sound um, that you hear in the final master like just listen to the snare i'll a b the original to the master here It's got more of just like a intense kind of like crunchy sound. I say that kind of in a good way. Like obviously there's some clipping happening here, a lot of dynamic processing happening. And it kind of just like squashes the snare and he's done it right here. A good mastering engineer can do that. Shave off those peaks of the, the snare and drum transients without ruining the actual punch and impact of the drum. 
Um, so when you compare that now, listen to kind of the more recent mixes. So that was, I think, 2013, this record. And then this Aura's one was 2018, 2019. And then the Emery is um, like last year that I mixed it. It's coming out this year. So you can hear how, because I was hearing what the final master was coming back as with my mixes, that started to inform my mixing. It started to like push back my mixing. So I'd hear like, okay, my it's always changing my drums like this. It's always changing my guitars like this. So I'm just gonna start like trying to get that more in the mix, right? Because obviously the, the better I can get my mixes, then the better the final master is gonna be. So let's listen to my original mix for this track and you can just listen for the snare and how it's kind of already got that that crunchy sound and that more um, kind of finished sound baked into the drums. <laughs> Back to the intervals. It's subtle, but the drums are just a little less like finalized. They're a little less like finished in that one compared to this. So it's just a process of learning what mastering engineers were doing to my mixes and then saying, okay, I'm gonna actually take control of some of that myself and actually bake that in because I know what I want it to sound like in the end. And if I can accomplish that in the mix, it's gonna be better than leaving that to mastering. So that's an interesting th thing there. And you hear there's less difference in the impact and the way the snare sounds. There's less of a difference here um, with the original mix and the master. Then likewise, if we go over to this Emery mix again. Now, just in curiosity's sake, let's bring these masters back to how they actually are. Let's check out the volume of each one of these. So the Emery one is definitely by far the loudest master. You can even just hear it. I mean. I mean, they're all within the same ballpark, but the Emery one is louder. I just analyzed it. So the RMS on that one is 8.4. Now, if we go to the, the Aura's mix, 10.7, 10.4. So these two are basically two dBs quieter than the Emery one. So let's just kind of bounce back and forth a bit. See that the emery one's like pretty intense they, i like them all they all sound good but i mean i like a loud master it's it's pushed it's aggressive and it didn't destroy the mix like the mix is intact and it's it's he made it better so i love that and just for comparison um so this was 10.4 on the master the mix was minus 14. so they're definitely squeezing out a few db that was minus 13 level on the mix up to minus 10 so he's making about 2 db ladder let's check the emery one Minus 13.6 up to 8.4. So obviously that one was pushed the most. So I hope that this just kind of gives you some some insight into, you know, on, a, on pro records that are out there, like what's the difference between what the mixer handed off to the mastering engineer? Here's three examples, and these are pretty typical. Um, like I said, you're just pretty subtle. I usually don't A-B it like this, and it's kind of actually eye-opening for me. Um, like this seemed exactly what they did and comparing it back and forth. But ultimately, if you send it out to get mastered by someone, you don't need to be analytical like this because then you'll start questioning, second guessing, like just listen to your record in the real world and listen to the final master in you know typical listening environments that you and other people normally listen to music. That's when you'll know whether it's a good uh, master or not. Um, but bottom line, I would say just get the mix as good as you possibly can. And if you don't really know about mastering, um, obviously you can learn more about that or you can send it off to a pro mastering engineer. Just find the guys who are mastering your favorite sounding records and pay them and do get them to master some of your stuff. Compare the difference, hear what they do, start letting that influence and push back on your mixes, which is gonna help your mixes get better as well. So that's it for today, guys.
Drop a comment below. Let me know what you think about the difference between these mixes and these masters. I'd be interested to hear it. We'll see you in the next video.